All right, guys, we are finally live. Episode 211 of The Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Co-host in the house, Jennifer Seymour, is joining us. What's going on, Jen? Hey, everybody. Fresh off that match over in core shooting, right, in Florida? Yes, had a good time. First time shooting a bolt gun, first time for a lot of things. That must have been awesome. Yes, I learned a lot. I learned that I need a Patriot case. There, there, yeah. I have I have I have one of those. I have some Pelicans and Patriot case, but you're definitely gonna need one, especially with all that fancy gear, man. That stuff is fancy. Yeah, hauling all that in the hotel at night, I was like, yeah, okay. So I talked to Brack today, and yeah, it's happening. <laughs> I'm ordering one now. Beautiful. Uh, Heath Clevenger's joining us. What's up, man? How's it going? It's going all right. And guest and star of the hour here, CEO of Hudson Manufacturing, Cy Hudson's joining us. What's going on, Cy? Not too much. Again, thank y'all for having me. It's uh, and thank y'all for uh, your patience as I figured out Google Chrome. Yeah, there you go. No worries, man. This has been a show that I've been wanting for a long time, and we went back and forth with some emails. Finally, saw you a couple times, and we're like, we're gonna make it happen. All right, uh, and we're here. Uh, yeah. Well, and we're here. The, yeah, the first couple times we tried to do this, uh, we were just slammed. We hit uh, the snag last year in June. Didn't uh, didn't ship till October. In June through October, it was just this, the, the day we didn't ship was this huge meeting of all of us just saying, all right, guys, this could all, this could all die right here. Or we could slash the marketing budget. Everyone could do two jobs that aren't their own. Uh, we, everyone tightened the belt and just grit down and bear it. And uh, the team came together. They all stuck it out and we started shipping in October. And that was a, uh, that was a big day. So whenever other we we saw some criticism online and on blogs, people were like, "Are they ever going to ship?" Oh, finally! And we're sitting there like, "There's no one more than us that are sitting here going, finally, thank goodness that we shipped because uh, it was a lot of work to get to that point." So we're we're pretty happy about it. Awesome, but is that actually probably the best time we can have you on because the H non pistol, which we're going to talk about a lot throughout the show, has been approved by USPSA. So for their production division gun, right? Yeah, that is correct. And I uh, know I don't want to go out of sequence unless you want me to on uh, on anything on what you want to talk about. Well, we'll talk about it here in a few. We're gonna that's coming up here, and I'm sure a lot of people are curious. I'm curious on the process of getting the gun in there, but let's go over some show announcements and some sponsors. Some show sponsors here, folks over at Tactical Shit Shop .com for all your tactical shit needs. Big supporters of the Shooters Mindset Show, and we appreciate them. We got a discount code coming from them for them later on in the show here. Also, the folks over at Gear Nation USA, uh, the Shooter's Mindset is an exclusive dealer for Shooter's Mindset, I mean for Gear Nation Apparel. We have their stuff over at the shop. Uh, Q&A, if you guys want to get a question live to Cy or any of us throughout the show, uh, and you're watching on the YouTube side of things, top right-hand corner is a good way to get that. Join the conversation there. Also, if you're on the Facebook side of things, there is a post that just went up where you can use the comment section, and Jen will grab those throughout the show. Uh, the website, the shooters mindset.com where you can watch the shooters mindset show live. Also blog articles. We have one coming from Aaron on a holster review and the shop and a bunch of other things over there. Check out the website. All right. There is a 2018. I forgot to announce this, uh, last show 2018 TSM t-shirts, shooters mindset t-shirts only coming out this year. And then we're taking them away. Pre-orders are available at the shooters mindset shop. Go get yourself one. All right. All right. For those unfamiliar with your side, tell us a bit more about yourself and tell us about the company, Hudson Manufacturing. Okay. Yeah. A little bit about myself. Uh, and I'm going to speak for Lauren a little bit since she isn't here. Uh, Hudson Manufacturing started as a concept around 2013. Uh, we we had come back from Afghanistan. I had deployed uh, active duty and Lauren deployed as a contractor. And we'd both spent a year in Kandahar. And uh, we decided that uh, where where the military was going, what was being done at that point in our experience, uh, we were going to leave the military and leave those career paths. Um, but we had, uh, we had uh, two years to figure out what we were going to do with that. And so we started researching and it was uh, very heavily research based before we did any development. So we uh, started as a garage FFL and uh, we started selling uh, anything, uh, but I knew the clientele. It was just all to a bunch of army guys. And I told them basically, Hey, I'm going to go $50 over retail. 
or over, I'm sorry, over dealer price on that. I'll go 50, <laughs> that sounds terrible, $50 over retail. I'll go $50 over uh, over dealer price, but I'm not going to advertise that. I'm not going to mess with that, but I'm requiring that you give me your price point, um, what you want for, uh, what you want the pistol for, and what are your favorite brands. And I have to go research three options for you, and you pick the best option. And so that was the beginning of us just trying to understand ATF forms, uh, we got to go to SHOT Show for the first time, you know, and it was Disney Disney World for guns, you know, just walking the the 15 miles of aisles and just being like, oh, this is so cool. Um, but uh, it, that was really where we started our real research. Before that, we had we had shot and we had trained. Uh, I had trained uh, in the, you know, in the Army, whatever training that is. But uh, my biggest trigger time as far as pistols is on the West Point pistol team. Spent a lot of time just uh, shooting there five to seven days a week, two to three hours a day, just shooting. And our coach made sure that we weren't just doing collegiate shooting, but also tactical shooting. And then uh, Lauren's background, she was training uh, with some SWAT instructors out in California and was going to go and commission to the Air Force, a commission she never took during the sequester. But that was our background shooting. And that's kind of how we met uh, is a common interest there. And, uh, that led on to whenever we were doing our research and whenever we decided to get the garage FFL, we we're like, you know what, we could maybe stick with this. This looks pretty interesting. It holds our interest. We're, we're we want to meet the people. We want to do the, uh, do the stuff. We want to do, be cool, be tactical. And, uh, so we started throwing more energy into it and we started getting nerding out past the marketing, past the, uh, what it is into the why. And then we started getting into patents. And then one day, about a year and a half in, we said, we think we can make a better pistol. And we said, let's never say that to anyone ever again uh, until we actually have a prototype uh, that's worth worthwhile looking at because it sounds crazy. You don't walk up to somebody like, what do you do for a living? Oh, we're trying to make a better pistol. People will laugh at you like, oh, that's cute, kids. Uh, tell you know, Come back to us whenever uh, you are doing any, anything real with life. And uh but that's, it became a passion. We started first with the patent research that moved into us uh, taking all of our deployment savings in 2013 and start putting toward a freelance engineer toward what eventually became uh, our first prototype, which we affectionately call the brick. It is that big, ugly 3D printed monstrosity that we uh, you know love and uh, are pretty proud of simply because of where it started and the thoughts it provoked. Right. I mean, and obviously, I mean, some of the patent stuff and, and your research, I mean, how do you come from, you know, being in the military, both of you guys are thinking, well, you know, there's a lot of companies, well, let's make a 1911, you know, that's been, you know, we can make a better 1911, or let's make a striker fire pistol, we can make the best striker fire pistol, you guys kind of like merged almost two of the best best of those right you took a kind of a, like a 1911 and then some people were calling well it's the first striker fire 1911 out there you know at first or like you kind of merged those two guns and there was always kind of back and forth well when are we going to see a striker fire version of that when are we going to see a polymer version of that and you guys kind of just and that's why i was so excited not even shot well i think i shot one at industry range day which was like a mag some people were like i didn't really shoot i shot it but it wasn't like a I'm not like a expert tester in seven rounds, but uh, I was just kind of flawed by the, the innovation of it. You haven't seen something like that in the pistol game for a long time. And you kind of had the best of those bo both worlds in one pistol design. So excited about that until this day, I still can't really get an H nine at the price. I want to get it. Now, if I want to go on the broker and spend some dough, I can, probably certainly get one that way and then we're going to hit kind of one of those questions if because i i still see that kind of on the social media where people are saying hey uh i still can't really find one of these guns at a reasonable price um but Heath, what are your thoughts on this kind of uh pistol design have you messed with it if any at all just on mute, mute. just on mute sorry trying to cut down on the background noise um I saw it two years ago at SHOT Show, and uh, it was intriguing. I haven't shot one live yet. I do understand that. I have uh, um, tried to figure out a way to make 
pistols are easier to control, which I think that's probably the biggest. I don't want to overstate for his product, but that's that's the easiest thing to recognize is that by moving the recoil system lower in the gun, it's supposed to allow you to control the recoil in the gun uh, better. And then uh, I want to say I probably spoke to Cy at SHOT Show year before last very briefly because uh, I remember, I think I asked about the trigger bow. Was it a bow like in a 1911 that went all the way around the magazine or did it just go around the edge like most striker fire guns? Because that's your, when you get into the internals of how a gun works, you know, the ones that operate on a pivot, I tend not to prefer, I mean, I carry a Glock at work, no choice, but uh, if I had my, I'd rather's, I would put a trigger that slid straight back and forward in every gun. I think if everybody could figure out how to do that, it'd be a better trigger just for not pivoting um, on my personal preference. But I remember looking at it as interesting. I'd like to sh spend some time and, put a couple hundred rounds to one or something, you know, kind of see how it compares, maybe do a nice little compare, put a, a 1911 or 2011 side by side with the uh, Hudson and kind of go back and forth to see how it feels. But it's interesting. I'm always up for innovation. There's definitely some better ways to do it. And I do think a lot of the industry is stuck in the, well, you have to do it that way because that's the way it's always been done. And, Right. That's always the wrong answer. So, yeah, Jen, what do you have? You shot you shot this a couple times, right? Or at least at industry. I shot it at Range Day um, this year and last year. Um, both years I shot it. In fact, uh, not this year, but last year, y'all took it apart and showed me the recoil system being lower and everything. Um, and I liked it. It shot well. It's hard to tell at at Shot Show at Range Day. I mean. You get like, you know, one mag, which is fine. And you're shooting at a target so far away. It's not like you can really do any drills to see like what your shot pattern really looks like. And if you can shoot faster, you know, get the sights back on faster because of less recoil. So it's a little bit harder to say. I mean, it, it felt good when I shot it. I, I'm like Heath. I'd love to spend more time with one and see, you know, really what it does. Repeatability. Um, but right. it, it was a good gun. There's. I enjoyed shooting it. It's so subjective too. You know, it was like if I hold a gun, I got more grip strength than Jen, mm -hmm. you know, and I shoot the gun and it's just, you know, it's very subjective how a gun reacts to being gripped and shot, you know, and then there are certain characteristics that it doesn't matter what you do there's going to be a certain amount of recoil there because you have to propel a bullet at a certain speed out of the barrel and, you, and you're never going to get, you can make it soft all you want, but there's a certain amount of it. There's never, it, if it was a single shot, 115 grain, nine millimeter, there's a certain amount of recoil that's going to come with that. So. Mm -hmm. right. That's why I think it's good to do like testing where you can like on a timer, look at, your shots and see where they're, where they're hitting and how fast you're doing it, you know, and if, if you're able to do a good shot group faster, then you can guarantee the recoil is mitigated better well, in that if, gun. If you do a bill drill at 10 yards and you, you measure accuracy and your pace mm -hmm. after working with, the, I mean, you can't pick the gun up out of the box and think that I'm, I got this trigger figured out. I had never pulled it. I mean, you know, right. you got to work with it a little bit, but right. You spend a couple hundred rounds doing bill drills and watching your, your shot placement and able to consistently, you know, compare well to get everything at a zone at 10 yards. This is a pace I can shoot this gun and this is a pace that I can shoot that gun. That's how you can. I think that's be the easiest way for me to compare guns. That's probably where right. I'd go. And you're, and I think that y'all hit it straight on. You're not trying to eliminate recoil. It's a recoil operated system. Right. You know, it's not gas operated. We're, uh, that's where pistols are. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to redistribute the recoil forces. And so, uh, one of the big things, like I think what y'all said at the, the beginning of all this is why did we go with a, uh, 1911 style trigger? Uh, and why did we go with a striker fired system? Uh, 
the 1911 style trigger, which is Heath, I think what you were getting at is that that trigger yoke. And that actually, that was a definition we had to decide for ourselves. And uh, because I've seen other companies come out and say, well, this is a 1911 style pistol, but they're still working on a pivot point. And it's similar to like a baby browning design, um, a lever a lever design trigger, anything that has a pivot point up front is so much easier mechanically and engineering wise to design. You have that huge lever arm that you're being able to work your tolerances out in and they're all being able to work together. Um, whenever you're dealing with a 1911 uh, style trigger, you have to worry about the inter uh, the interference with your magazine. You have to worry about uh, where your interaction with your sear is because if you're trying to get that nice, crisp, short travel, um, your tolerance stacks become a matter of criti criticality. Um, every um, they're just the number of critical features that you have to uh, take into account during the design phase is uh, is is a lot more than with a lever uh, lever design trigger. And so when someone asks, well, why didn't one of the bigger companies do this? Why would they? They're selling a million a year of of pistols that everyone's been buying for a million a year for the past five to seven years. So the, the economic incentive for them to innovate when people are saying uh, with their dollars that they don't want them to innovate is that's a pretty, pretty big pill to swallow for a, uh, an established company. Yeah. Well, the, the market drives, you know, demand drives what people, I mean, it's one thing for people to say it and another thing for people to put their money in, actually buying what they says what they say they like that's true i want it to I want it to be as pretty as a 1911 i want to have a trigger as good as a 1911 but i want it to be cheaper than a glock <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> right. exactly uh i got a couple here in the live chat here uh, be more one says he's a proud owner of an hudson h9 and he loves it uh bold and curious uh did a video on a simple trigger job on the h9 uh, when are magazines and different grips, when would those be available? Uh, for magazines, let me make sure. I don't think I'm on mute because I just went over to the YouTube live chat to see the, the questions. Uh, magazines, uh, we are working on those now. We have to kick off some tooling that should be in the next couple months. Uh, that's the goal. And Bald and Curious have actually watched those videos. I absolutely love them. I don't know what the accent is, but I absolutely absolutely love it and uh it was awesome to see the the comparison with the guns you got out there thank you so much for supporting us uh but yes i'm looking forward to getting you new magazines and what's the other one uh different grips vz should be getting those out soon and actually i've seen a bunch of the guys on like the hudson h9 group on facebook a bunch of guys Les george kicked out some then kicked them over to his buddy because he sold out on them uh stephen Steele did some grips so um our goal actually is to free license it through our website. We just haven't had the time to get the legal language finalized and hang them up. I want to all like upper back straps, lower back straps, grip panels, uh, sites. I want to free license any of those designs to where anybody can support us that way. We, we want to make pistols, not, not accessories. That's our goal. Although there's a few accessories in the work that I'd love to do. <laughs> and, and are these mags like, you know, specific to the gun, the H9, there's no crossover. There's their proprietary magazines. They are proprietary magazines and they're not, re they should not be retailing it over 34.99 MSRP. Um, the goal, the reason for that is with using a yoked system, uh, the 1911 style trigger, we had to find a magazine that was extremely tapered at the top. So when you look at a 5906 tube, that's what it is. It's thinner at the top than uh, an M&P magazine or an H&K magazine. Uh, it's an older, uh, older style magazine based off the high power tube. The 5906 tube is based off the high power tube. But we had to make with how how low we pushed our slide on top of our grip, we had to make our cuts uh, higher as opposed to the 5906 tube, which rests higher in the, the frame of the 5906. Their cuts are lower. So with that, we wanted to use a proven tube, but we had to do proprietary cuts. If we could have used an existing magazine, I would have much, well, actually all of us would have much preferred it. Uh, it would have been a lot easier, a lot less cost. Our first ever prototype, we actually 
uh, put a patent, a provisional patent on an offset magazine release to do it, but we just we just decided that the well, first off, it stunk, and the second off is the customers did not want to see an offset magazine release to accommodate. It just it looked goofy as all get out. I don't think we could have gotten away with it. So we priced the mags at thirty four ninety nine. There we go. Uh, Bald and Curious also said he paid well over MSRP to get his uh, H9. Honestly, he's not regretting it. He says one of becoming one of his favorite pistols really fast. That's so, awesome. There we go. Um, but other than that, I got a couple here that we need to get into. What was the goal purpose for the H9? Was it like a competition, defense, kind of planker? What was that goal? So the goal for the H9, as far as marketing and positioning of it within the market, was to not niche it at all. And it was the it was the biggest, okay, how do we not niche it? So when people would ask us what we would compare it to, everyone had five pistols that they would rattle off immediately. Well, compared to this, it's like this. Compared to this, it's like this. Compared, And we would actually say, well, compared to a 1911 at which is all steel at 43 ounces that at H nine is all steel at 34 ounces. And it, uh, for nine millimeter, 1911s, it has double the capacity, but it's still just as thin. And at the grip panels were actually thinner at 1.24 inches wide at the grip panels than a single stack 1911, which is traditionally 1.3. And then we'd say, but compared to a SIG 229, which is 34 uh, ounces in aluminum frame, ours is 34 ounces with a steel frame with a with a uh, slimmer prof uh, slimmer profile uh, shorter reset and shorter travel trigger and a lower bore axis well compared to and so you know the big question everybody brought up well what about compared to a glock 19 and we had to say well compared to a glock a stock glock 19 we cannot compete with the price due to the materials uh stamp sheet metal uh over mold uh polymer those materials that whole gun can be made for then a major component of ours because we also have the cust uh, the really, really nice uh, front serrations that cost more machine time on the slide, the upper serrations on the top. All that's just machine time, which you pay dollars every every minute a machine runs on your part. So what we what we usually talk to them about is like, well, do you run a stock Glock? And they've been, nah, I got mine all, all modded out. And I'm like, aha, now here we go. All right, what kind of trigger you got it? Apex or Haley Skimmer or some really awesome. Like, what kind of what kind of sights you got on it? Wilson Combat. Okay. Well, what kind of who did your custom serrations? Agency or ATEI or so, you know, some and I'm I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, uh, well, who did your stippling job? And they'd go through that. And I'm like, well, how much money you got in that gun? 16, yeah. 18, 22, 2400 dollars. I'm like, well, this one is all steel at 1147 and has all the same feature set, Trigicon HD front sights, G10 grip panels. And so whenever we're looking at what a, what a, it's not cheap, but it is a value because we have three all steel component, well, four, four major machine steel components in the, in the slide, the barrel, the chassis and the grip. And those right there, each one of those probably cost the same amount that you, you put into a polymer uh, pistol with stamped sheet metal parts, uh, simply because machine time. And so, uh, so whenever we went to niche the product, we said it doesn't have a niche. It's going to be the guy who an early adopter of technology. So bringing over, you know, kind of that tech portion, the uh, guy who wants to, uh, who for him steel is real. The guy who loves his two two nine two two six, but wants a lower bore axis and more of a nineteen eleven feel. And then uh, the competition guys, we weren't going to say that early on, but uh, to get a really nice custom firearm with the trigger that we have, with the capacity, with uh, the recoil feel, the recoil redistribution, and that feel of shooting. Um, you're gonna you're gonna be paying more than eleven forty seven to start out. Now, will we get to the point where the the H nine could be modded out to be a three thousand five thousand dollar race gun? Oh, I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, but the entry cost level to a pistol with the feature set with the H nine for the competition guys is actually very very reasonable. Which sounds terrible because like a guy who's gonna pay. Um, our neighbors down the street, STI, make an awesome 2011, right? They, they do. They, they, 
but they're fourteen, eighteen hundred dollars for a polymer uh, pistol or a steel at eleven forty seven. And we did that very purposefully so that we could enter the market and we could grow as a company. Um, and we're also following history. We did steel, we did aluminum this year, and we're going to keep on following history and doing more and more things as we go. All right. Y'all can, as I, y'all as can as tell as me as to shut up, by the way. I, I, I talk a lot. Feel free to interrupt me if I monologue like that again. No, I no, I, I appreciate the, the the long talk because it's informational. You know what I mean? It's, it's some, some kind of guess to just kind of go on with the story. And it's like, all right, man, we need to move to the next question. We're trying to keep this under two hours, right? But no, we appreciate the information there. When I first saw the gun, what I thought was competition right away. I'm like, so it's low bore access, right? We can control the recoil. Really, I didn't care how I don't care how it's done. You know, there's multiple companies who do, do the rotating barrel thing, the tilt barrel, whatever they call that. And then there's some people who are just not having the barrel move and figuring it out. I don't I didn't care how it does. As long as the gun shoot flat, I can track the sights really quick. Um, I like metal guns because I shot Glocks and 1911s and those guns, and I like both of those guns, but I do prefer a metal gun if I was gonna go competition. I want a knight, but I want that 1911 trigger, right? I want that. So it had all that in one th- in one gun. So I was like, man, I want this gun. I want to shoot it. I want to know all about it. And here we are. I've shot one outside of the of industry range day and the whole shot show kind of gun feel. And I liked it still. Shot flat, was able to track the sights. Uh, for me, and obviously this is just preference, I would swap the side out to a fiber optic. But that's something that you guys are offering now. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to please everybody, but for competition, I don't need that Trigicon HD night sight, which is great sight. Otherwise, I want the front fiber optic, but you guys are offering the H9 with the fiber optic now, correct? Uh, we will be offering the H9A with a fiber optic. And actually, so the reason we're doing that, and it just so everyone knows, is the a an HD front sight retails for around ninety dollars, and where a fiber optic you can get retail for for around thirty to forty. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to carve two hundred dollars off of our MSRP for the H nine A, and so that's a that's a cost driver, guys. Um, but uh, I I just for anyone who wants a fiber optic, it's an MMP front cut, and a lot of the guys are. Uh, for the H9A, I actually went on Mr. Novak's uh, website and bought those sites retail and threw them on the H9As because I, I love it when people pay retail. I know that sounds terrible, but I'm a CEO. It's kind of my job. Um, and so uh, I wanted to I wanted to basically beta test a fiber optic and people people really liked it. People really liked uh, having it was I think it was a 0.183 inch tall or 0.17 on uh fiber optic on the front of the h9a's at shot show on the line and on, it was people responded favorably but man you want to talk about a personal preference it's like if we packaged yeah. a holster with this i mean it's yeah. all a personal preference uh exactly. make make the pistol yours you know figure out what works for you what works for your eyes some people do better with some things and some people have wonky eyes as long as you, as long as it works for you and you can use it in the situation where you need it go for it we're going to move on here to discount corner here halfway portion of the show try to save you guys some money plenty of more hudson h9 and h9a talk coming up here jen what do we have discount carbon arms you can get 10 percent off at carbonarms.us um for awesome shotgun shell caddies chest rigs. Um, I know they're having the Lucas Oil Championship, shotgun championship soon, so everybody needs shell caddies for that. Um, Extension tubes for the shotguns, all kinds of good stuff at carbonarms.us, so go check them out. You can get 10% off with TSM10. You can also get 10% off at the Shooter's Mindset store with my discount code, which is the best code. Don't listen to Heath in a minute, which is Jen TSM 10. You can get 10% off some base pads. There's all kinds of goodies in there. So go check out the store at the shooters mindset.com. Boom. There you go. Heath, what do you got, man? Uh, we got American defense for the three gun 10 and we got red Hill tactical with the, uh, Clevenger all caps. If you're looking for a great barrel to put in your rifle, hit us up about one for Criterion barrels. Or you need some good true spec gear, 
then we can definitely take care of you. So there we go. Sorry. Yeah, Red Hill Tactical. Uh, speaking of holsters, and we haven't got into that talk yet. Obviously, it was a little bit harder to find in the beginning. Some companies were doing them. Red Hill Tactical was one of the first holster companies, if I'm not mistaken, to have a holster for the H9 uh, pistol. So use, uh, what is it, Clevenger all caps for 10% yep. off if you have an H9 looking for a holster or looking to purchase one in the future. Take a look at them. All right, uh, the folks over at Shop Tactical Shit TSM ten for ten percent off everything at the uh, the shop uh, Tactical Shit uh, online shop, or in the retail store, which is over in St. Peter's, Missouri. Uh, just yell it at the cashier, and you should get ten percent off your purchase there. Uh, folks over at uh, TerranTacticalInnovations.com TSM ten for ten percent off the entire website at TTI. Uh, we went over Carbon Arms UM Tactical TSM ten UMTactical.com for ten percent off the entire website. Lastly. Mindset16 at ranclp.com for 15% off your lubrication firearm cleaning needs. All right, here, uh, Jen, what do you have as far as the conversation and about the uh, H9? Or how was the thought between the two? More better question, because we kind of talked briefly about the H9A, right? And you shot both of them this past uh, industry range day. Did you notice the difference between the two platforms? I did shoot both and it was hard to tell much difference. Like I said, I mean, you get one mag, you know, everybody's standing there, they hand you the gun, you unload it, they hand you the next one, you unload it. It was really difficult to, in that situation, to kind of tell a whole lot of difference between them. Um, I, you know, I would take a little bit more time, I think, to look at them and take the time to shoot them. It was also really, really cold and I shot in gloves, which I never do. Mm -hmm. because I was freezing. And so like everything I shot, I don't know. It, it, to me, it's weird to shoot in gloves, but I finally gave up and started shooting in gloves. So by the time I got to Hudson, I was shooting in gloves. And to me, it's just, it was hard to tell a difference. Yeah, I know. I noticed a slight difference. I think I still favored the H9 a little bit more, but like I said, that's with one mag, right? Mm -hmm. well, there's um, a, but they're very comparable otherwise. When you're shooting guns, plus there's a, there's a happy medium between a gun that's too heavy and a gun that's too light because you can weight a gun down and the recoil is just awesome. You know, you make it like a 22, it weighs two pounds. You know, it ain't fun to hold up there and shoot, but it ain't going to move around at all. You know, and then you take on the other end of that, you take and shoot a full polymer frame, two inch barrel, 380, you know, and that ain't any fun at all either. So mm -mm. there is definitely a happy mm -hmm. medium. Right on. Um, where do we uh, talk? Let's talk a little bit more on the new design, the HUT, the H nine A. Um, believe they're eighty percent the same, right, as the H nine? Yeah, I think. Uh, but I think between all of us, we use the number eighty or ninety percent the entire time uh, because the the. All that you're changing, you're changing your back, two back straps, your grip panels, and then your grip. Your chassis is steel, remains the same. All your wear surfaces are the same. Your interaction between your slide and your barrel and your chassis all remain steel. Um, so what you're doing is you're just saving weight and cost. So you're taking a, a steel upper back strap and a steel grip and replacing uh, the upper back strap with polymer and the lower back strap with polymer and then your grip panels with polymer and your grip becomes aluminum and so you carve a half pound out of the pistol just with that with all your wear surfaces remaining the same and that's the, the big thing that we were excited to show is we were excited to show that the recoil characteristics you feel it more pushing back because like Heath said if it's lighter the forces have to go somewhere and they have to react on something and if it's lighter in your hand you're going to feel the force more but it's still rearward as opposed to over your hand, which is something we were really excited to show people. Um, but for That's huge too. That's huge. I mean, like me, I hate, I just don't like 40 caliber because to me the recoil is more flippy than like a 45 is more of a push straight back. And y'all's gun is more of a push straight back. I mean, it, well, that you so can, that you can control. <laughs> exactly. So basically what is, what is recoil? What is, uh, what is muzzle flip? What is muzzle rise? Uh, and shooting a pistol, since we're not bracing any uh, no, any longer on our shoulder, it's torque about your wrist. Your wrist is your pivot point in your biomechanical system. 
and big nerdy words coming out of Mississippi accents, kind of rough, I know. Um, but you know, whenever your wrist starts rotating, if you're, if you're a human being, that's what's rotating. Um, and, uh, what we tried to do and what we, what I believe we accomplished is that the forces now travel below the plane of your wrist, um, in front of the trigger guard and you have that large barrel flange and it's traveling down your recoil guide rod. And that is where your forces bottom out now. Um, the low bore axis accounts for the slide reciprocating over over your wrist. And that is why low bore axis pistols, someone uh, made a very, very true comment. They said, hey, your bore axis isn't any better than the Glocks. It's probably a little less than the, uh, the Archon Type B uh, or the old Strike 1. And we're like, yes, that is correct. But it's when we put it together as a system that you have a 1911 style straight moving trigger that travels 0.125 inches on the reset and that straight one axis pull. Like Heath, you said, why do I, you know, you're like I like those yoke triggers that go in one direction. Why is that? Because we don't like introducing unnecessary movement to our front sight. We're focused on our front sight. We're focused on getting the shot out. And I'd rather my finger move the least amount of travel in a singular axis as opposed to introducing a pivot that I have to overcome through training. Well, and it's always the person, you know, the it's it it, it the person is usually the weakest link in any in any well made firearm yeah. um, but if if you don't have to overcome an obstacle and it's already there i think that's how i'd prefer it anyway i think there's a, a greater chance of introducing uh elevation changes on the pivot triggers versus a straight back trigger then not that you can't do it but it's probably easier to maintain and then all you have to worry about is your windage right there's when is when is the H9A expected to ship? I know we don't want to probably hit any solid dates, but yeah, uh, maybe a time frame. Oh no, I'm not doing it this time. I learned my <laughs> lesson last year. Uh, last year was the newbie mistake where I was sitting there. I was like, oh yeah, we're ship. Lauren and I were like, we were excited. Y'all have no idea how excited we were to ship in yeah. June. It was just the most. You know, we were like three and a half, three and a half to four years of our lives is going to have this culmination. We did this cool high speed video champagne champagne bottle exploding and then oh, yeah. hitting the delay. Hitting the delay, we were just like, screw this. You know, <laughs> it was it was just it was bad. Um, so we're not doing that again. What we can say is we want to get it out to you as soon as possible. Uh, we have multiple companies. Um, we make we do make some parts in house, but what we're doing as we set parts up, we're bringing them in. Uh, but for the grip, the H9A aluminum grip, since there are companies out there in the world who are very good at hogging through aluminum, especially in this industry, and they are they know how to make what what I'd call lower, which is basically what our grip is, they're, uh, they're all out there bidding on it and seeing who wants to work right now. There we go. Well done. I mean, we talked a little bit. Of, Jen brought up the, the 40 cal, which we need to let die that caliber. I swear if... <laughs> If it wasn't for USPSA, I think it will. I think it's still shoot nine in USPSA. <laughs> there's 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 still a lot of LE in forty. Ton of is, LE is there? 40. I mean, at least my local uh, police department has saw the light, and they were actually carrying. Well, they they were carrying an HK forty five, and they moved to the seventeen Gen five. Boy, I, I mean, I, hey, I like an HK pistol, but them triggers are shit. Hey, the, the US, <laughs> USP was my first serious pistol. I, uh, I had an HK USP. I thought it was the coolest thing ever back whenever I turned 21. It's like, this thing's cool. It's in all the movies. Pretty sure she yeah. sees this. <sighs> yeah, that's where it needs to stay. I tell you what, you, you own a USP, a, uh, uh, a UMP. What, I'm, not, shit, I'm getting my HKs kind of confused here. <laughs> The, the USP, right? You own one of those guns, yeah. you know, you think of Bad Boys 2, you know, the Mike Larry stainless one. You know, that's where it stays. The triggers on them are shit, and I've just never been a fan. Hey, oh. but <laughs> Well, the design and engineering, if you want to if you want to say something, taken from the Mark 23 moving into the HK USPs and then to the, the P2000, all the stuff that went on with that. But actually, there's a tie-in to the Hudson story on that. You saw that Larry Vickers and Ken Hagathorn back in the day, the story went around that they approached HK to make a combat ready 1911. And 
the HK45 was the love child. And then fast forward uh, a couple of years, they were saying, well, that really wasn't what we were thinking. Well, that was, that was a lot of the driver. We're like, well, why do these, why do these high speed units keep on wanting to go back to the 1911 and then dumping it and then moving to a 226 or a Glock style platform and they keep on rotating. Well, one of our theories was that uh, maybe they just can't get them to run it, you know, for, for as long with the hundred year old design for manufacturability. And that was something that it has, it's been, it's been a lot of time uh, researching why uh, certain platforms were dropped. Some, sometimes it's totally due to the, the person who took over the unit and who, how they want to spend their contracting dollars. Uh, so you have to really watch your, your data and your conclusions when you get into that. There you go. So can I ask a production question real quick? What Do y'all have any hand-fit parts that go into your gun? Or are they all like a off the shelf plug and play like a Glock? It is. Uh, I'll, I'll say it this way: over the course of the first fifteen hundred that went out, uh, there there might have been a few that we had to dial in um, and hand fit. Um, but as the process has worn in, as we got through into real production, it is now a plug and play, uh, pr- real production uh, with our tolerance our tolerances. Um, Will there be some parts that are tighter fit? Yes. Uh, over the course of the next uh, two to five years, we will be working with every part, every dimension, everything to get it to where it is truly product uh, production worthy in the way that people think of a Glock or an MMP. Um, and you look at a lot of the stuff that they do with polymers and stamp sheet metal, um, they're actually able to hold that a lot better but there's a, a huge cost implication in starting up uh, molds. If you get it wrong and you're a new company, you, you're gonna, you're, it's really, really going to hurt as far as the cost to get those stood back up. So for us, we were able to follow history in the way that we went with machine components first, even though the cost is higher per part. Changing those parts can be done in real time as opposed to a, a mold or a plastic. So um, as we grow, um, we'll be able to do a lot of a lot of manufacturing specific stuff that isn't too exciting to the shooting community sometimes. Right. But whenever you think of whenever you think of manufacturability and a CEO and a production process, it gets all really nerdy and exciting. Oh, I get it. There we go. Speaking of USPSA, we talked about the forty a little bit, but the Hudson H nine is now USPSA approved, and I'm just curious on that process on on how do you get approved being a new pistol and this is exciting because this is what i've wanted an h9 for the entire time right uh yep and so the biggest part of the approval process is you have to have two thousand units produced and so that was our biggest hang up because what we shipped last week and i've got to start changing this number because i've used this number for about a month now but it's actually it still remains true is the same number we shipped our entire first month of production so we're in a ramp up and we're continuing to ramp up. But once we hit that 2000 mark, we had already at SHOT Show had the USPSA guys come over, look at the pistol. You can't have an internal magwell. You can't have an external magwell. You have to hit 2000 units. And it has to be, a, a, I believe it has to be a certain dimension per the rules that they established that year. And the H9 fits that. And so that'll be a really fun thing when the H9A comes uh, about is to get it there as well, to get it to that 2000 unit. And then um, for me, I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm not going to give anything away and I'm not going to say any dates ever again, I don't think, but uh, a red dot version in the future um, is something that I, I we really want to do. Um, yeah. So, uh, and then, well, sky's the limit for the other things we could do. We could, we could do a lot of fun accessories that, that go on pistols, but I'd, Really love to see the aftermarket take off, but you, thinking about the aftermarket, um, there has to be an economic incentive for a company to put toward the aftermarket, right? Um, Chick Fil A, oh, good stuff! Look, they brought me milkshakes. I have wonderful children. That's that's Thank a you. Right there. A surprise milkshake really does bring a smile. That's yeah. actually my daughter's <laughs> boyfriend. See, he's trying to get not get killed. There we go. Good, good thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Sorry for the cutoff there, side, but uh, no, no, you're good. I'm milk, just, no one, no one's bringing me a milkshake. 
All right. I'll bring that up. If, I, if I saw one come through, the, that'll be all. That'll really make me <laughs> happy. There you go. <laughs> um, but well, look, companies making aftermarket accessories. If we start di- diverting what we're doing uh, from pistols and we try to put more support toward like doing as many of the accessories that i'd love to do um we wouldn't be making enough pistols to to support the aftermarket demand so it'll take a couple of years to really get to where we need to be but when you look at it historically let's use glock as a great example because you have the numbers out there the first 10 years glock did around three hundred fifty thousand pistols total so you average that out, that's about 35,000 pistols a year. And now they're cranking out a million a year. So where we're at with our ramp up is actually pretty historically solid um, within four months to get to 2,000 units and on the ramp up scale. So we have, uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us, but we're actually in pretty good company as far as where our numbers are right now. There we go. I mean, and we've talked, Oh, by the way, this one popped out at me here. Bald and curious. By the way, it's IDPA legal as well. So I don't know if there's like a s- laws behind that as far oh. as getting it IDPA legal. I don't know. I think you just need to fit their current rules, rule set, like as far as weight, dimension, stuff like that. So there's that. Um, what else we got here? How? Uh, so I mean, I've been following a Havoc Legion shooting teams in here. By the way, he says hi to everybody, and I and he actually runs, I believe, and I don't know if this is true, but he actually uh, runs the Hudson H nine group on Facebook. I think that's like the largest following of is that H9 Chris Narden? owners or whatever. Yeah, I believe that's him. So, <clears throat> dude's awesome. He like brought all his his, his shooting team squad, uh, his kids. They showed up at NRA and they all had jerseys that were designed by the. Oh, that was so cool. I need, yeah. Right on. So he, I mean, good. Actually, friend of mine here. We we we've uh, shot co- one match together, I believe, saw each other a couple times. But running that group, and sometimes I just follow quietly. I don't really post in there much. But I see people like, when are we going to get threaded barrels? When are we getting RMR cuts? I'm like, dude, if I get even, they're trying to get the pistols out there, dude. You guys are talking about threaded barrels and RMR ready slides. I mean, there is a picture out there that I posted in the announcement of one with a threaded barrel and a slide cut. So let's just get that question out there. It's obviously been toyed with. It's coming eventually. Um, the right? threaded barrels are actually... I believe they are next week will be shipped to the engineers for the final high speed video testing. So what you want to check on that is you want to make sure that the slide velocity is similar to other slides on the market with where we ended up. We ended up with around a 17 pound recoil spring and uh, we want to make sure that the sl- slide velocities aren't doing anything wonky, which is the technical engineering term. Uh, so we don't want any wonky slide velocities. I say wonky all the time. That's funny. <laughs> so have y'all have y'all played around with uh recoil springs as it relates to you know because competition wise if you buy a factory gun that's probably one of the biggest things cheapest things you can do out of the box to make a gun feel completely different everybody changes them mm-hmm. well <laughs> we actually built the recoil guide rod uh, to be where you could replace your recoil spring. But what started happening was, is we had a small lot of the thread sealant not setting. So it got to customers and started on threading, causing everything from DCU. So the minute that we had more than one instance of that, we had to go check all of our thread sealant. It's obviously anyone who's having that issue, it's covered under warranty, or we can talk you through how to set it properly. But we just started staking the guide rods. And so now all the guide rods are staked so they won't walk. Um, So we will be selling for competition shooters a separate recoil guide rod that they can dial in uh, and they can replace the springs on. But we're going to have to annotate somehow for warranty purposes so that someone isn't buying the non-staked guide rod and then saying, oh, this thing is totally messed up. I'd like to send in the whole pistol. Um, so we're going to have to dial in how we do that, but I'm looking forward to offering that to competitive shooters um, because that was that was the whole purpose for designing it the way we did was so that those guys could go out and be like, I wonder if you put two pound tr- uh, spring in there, what happens? You know, which is what every competitor does. They do the lightest powder puff load and the lightest spring and how flat can you sh- make that thing shoot? 
Oh yeah, yeah. Hit the paper and then fall. <laughs> yeah. it's absolutely. Stick, stick in the cardboard. It doesn't have to pass through. <laughs> yeah, there it is. That's true. As long as there's a, a a mark on the on the on the paper, that's good enough, right? Yeah. He's made a grease ring. ring. Really good. <laughs> made a grease ring, right? Y'all had yeah. a match about I don't know a couple months ago. Somebody who's a jokester. We had some people that were. Uh, how can I say it? Might have been cheating. They were a little ditzy. And he picked up a piece of brass and stuck it in one of the holes as they were coming around scoring. And he's like, look, that one didn't even go through the paper. It was the shell casing, not the bullet. That one didn't even go through the paper. And they're like, dude, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was the shell casing. And then they realized it. And they were like, oh, oh, I, I knew that. Oh, so that actually snuck by some folks. That's the crazy part. For a moment it did. And then they're like, oh, wait, wait. I, I knew that. I was just joking. Right. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Oh, man. I, yeah. I remember so many embarrassing things when I started out. Oh, my gosh. And, and what's bad is whenever whenever you're like trying to save face, and you're like, oh, yeah, well, obviously the, the dingus uh, is what I was talking about um, the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> there there it is it's funny i had a question we we uh but you kind of hit it as we were talking about this was people getting their hands at an h9 at a fair price right but you pretty much said that you're obviously amping up production and you're producing more and more pistols as you go and you compare it you throw those glock numbers out there so there it is it's gonna it's probably gonna continue to Kind of be a little bit on the harder side to find, especially. I mean, I'm in a gun shop. I'm checking RSR. I'm like, all right. It says it still says new and green, zero units available. I'm like, and it was on there. Some dude was like, dude, I saw it the other day. They had like ten of them. I'm like, well, thanks for letting me know. You know what I mean? But well, I'm go actually having an interesting thing with that is uh the challenge is I've seen them go for twenty three hundred, thirty two hundred dollars, then I've seen them go for eighteen or sixteen hundred, and then whenever the the rush happened right after uh, in the past couple weeks. I've seen a couple people trying to offload them and go below map. And the reason they're doing that is the margin's still healthy. And it's because we've given such a healthy margin to the dealer and the distributor um, that the dealers feel like that it's okay for them to go below map. And which which really hurts hurts our brand and hurts what we're trying to do because if that happens and dealers start seeing that, they're like, well, how does that happen? Well, and the reason they did it is they wanted the cash flow to throw up on five to 10 ARs and go and go put it back. Well, now, now I've created a, a challenge because now I have to go to my distributors and say, Hey guys, we have to please remind them there is map pricing or I'm going to have to say, guys, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't afford to have you give you my product because you're not treating it. Um, you're not treating it per the contract, which is a really, really stinky thing to have to do because to have the conversation with someone like, Hey man, stop taking money out of your own pocket to me just blows my mind. Um, that, that, that we're having to have that conversation because I remember being garage FFL. I remember how much I loved high margin, uh, margin, uh, products. Um, so we, we really tried to honor that, that lineage of where we came from as a garage FFL, and so that's that's a lot of give and take and a lot of challenge to to do that right and to respect the dealer, respect the distributor, and respect what what they need as far as cash flow. My big thing is just don't advertise it if you're going to go below it for for the for love of all that's good, America. Right? Yeah, it, it seems like that. Uh, whatever's available is bought up in one shot, and then there we go, sit on zero units, right? And that's how quick it happens. So we have a couple here. Havoc Legion shooting team says, what's been the biggest surprise, good or bad, that has came from building the H9 uh, that we would we ha that we would have never guessed would happen? Hmm. Can, can we get a little bit more as far as like good or bad uh, economically or as far as the, the – I'll tell you the coolest thing was the reception um, of the industry. I, I we, we really planned a lot – you know, and as far as our marketing, but this industry really, if they want to hate you, they are going to hate you and they will do it. They will do it in a very loud fashion. Um, and so when we showed up at 12 days after our first post and millions of people had seen it and we had a line at our industry day at the range Bay, it was this huge humbling moment. 
as 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 people who had been just huge fans and, and participants in the industry and just you know I, I grew up a fanboy i just loved guns growing up so to be there and have all these these writers and these names and these reviewers show up and then executives of other companies you know coming to give us a nod for um to as being a company it was just it was just humbling it was so gratifying and the funniest thing though is people showed up like i came here to hate this thing and i'm like okay um mm -hmm. this has been three and a half years of my life if you hate it go for it and have fun man and uh get it out of your system uh, i but, remember last year at shot show because the bus took us up to the very top and y'all were like the first booth there and everybody was like oh man yeah they're dropping us right off at hudson like everybody because it was the talk of town nobody had seen it everybody wanted to be the first ones to go and it, see what it looked like and play with it put their hands on it so it was definitely probably the most hyped pistol by far the elite definitely that year but leading up to it and probably that i can remember as far as a pistol goes like the most hyped mm -hmm. Well, what's so funny is people accused us of over advertising. And I said, well, y'all realize we, we launched a website, an Instagram and Facebook page, and then we did one brand video and that's all the advertising we ever did. Everything else was the, the, the blogs, uh, the gun collective, four guys, guns, all those guys, uh, anyone who showed up, everyone hate or love us. They did the advertising for us. And then we got to be gun nerds. It was so much fun. We got to talk about why we did what we did, why we did the design. Um, we weren't just trying to be, uh, you know, a space age looking pistol. There, were, there was a method behind what we did and actually being able to share that story. Um, that was just, it was, I don't know. It's still fun. I'm, I still enjoy talking about it. I realize I, 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 I do talk too much, but uh, I still like talking about this every chance I get. Yeah, I mean, I remember that video. Very well done video. That thing made it its way. Well done. It, but it, it made its in. way in like every feed. It was everywhere, you know. So and, it, and what was crazy? You should have heard the conversations leading up to that. We're only showing the gun for half a second. What are we doing? Are we crazy? Are we insane? What are we advertising? Spears and you know. <laughs> and it was like everyone was just like, "This is never gonna work." Like, no, we we. No, and then we'd all calm down, like, no, if we're going to do it, this is the way to do it. And just to have that work, you just want to sit back and just be like, thank you so much, God, for everything. Yeah, right on. I mean, outside of uh, obviously designing the gun, shipping them, all that, you know, I know that was a pain in itself, getting all those together. But what was um, what was it like? as far as customer service wise, building that up, um, taking in, obviously, you know, it's, and I kind of use this, you know, with any new, even a new phone that comes out, you know, you, people still say, Hey, you wait three, four months before you get the new iPhone because it's going to mm -hmm. have its kinks and then you got to return it. And people still say that. So a totally new pistol design. I, I knew in the back of my mind that there was going to be something that was going to pop up through all that customer service kind of support warranty, How's it looking right now and what what are we what are we looking at? So for any single issue, we have less, I'd say 0.12 percent as are our repeat issues, um, which is awesome. Um, we've had a few uh, sites. Uh, the, the first ones that happened were that it shoots too low and we asked for all those guns back. And that that was just a terrifying like, what are our dovetails off or what's going on? We just. You know, we were yelling at everybody trying to figure it out before the gun showed up. And then we got there and we couldn't repeat it. And it was like, so like, what's going on? Um, and you want to, you want to talk about getting your heart in your throat. You're like, we can't call back a customer and tell them they're wrong about shooting too low. And so we got and started mm -hmm. engaging with the customers and started talking to them. And it came out combat site picture. Uh, we, we zeroed at 25 yards with the combat sight picture, which means the tritium vial is your point of aim, point of impact. And other people, uh, half the customers were like, well, that's great. And then half of them were like, well, that's stupid. It should be where the top of the site lines up with the middle of the bullseye. And that's where your point of aim, point of impact was. And it was just a customer education. And that was a goofy one. And then you go into some of the ones where you're, you, you worry about whether the pistol is uh, malfunctioning or not. And we had a few DCU issues and we got them back in the friction surfaces. 
uh, got out with uh, too much friction still on that surface. And so you replace that for the customer. You send it back. Um, and then you put it in a quality check and you do a study and you keep on every once in a while you pull your data. Um, but where we are right now, uh, we are doing – oh, man, you don't say this stuff out loud. This is bad juju. You start you start patting yourself on the back. That's when things go wrong. So I'm not going to pat myself on the back. or, or But my team – our team has worked extremely hard to do very well by the customer. We had a huge, excuse me, we had a huge snafu over Christmas. Um, it's the Kansas Gun Guy video, um, which uh, it said 34 ounce paperweight. Uh, three hours after that video posted, I had tracked that guy down and was on the phone with him. Um, and <laughs> I, I was on the phone with him over Christmas leave and, uh, cause he got an auto reply and posted that video. And so I was trying to figure it out. It was already back at a gun store. And I just was like, had the sinking feeling he returned the pistol at gun store, which means I couldn't cover it for him under warranty. So I got the p- pistol back from the gun store and I said, I will fix this pistol for you and you can use it as a range rental for the rest of its life. But I want to know what's going on with this pistol. Um, but as far as customer service, he sent that email December 30th or he posted that video or that he put that email out December 30th, got the auto reply, posted the video the same day. Well, December 7th, we had exchanged multiple emails with him. Our customer service told our armor who was also, uh, doing tests, um, for production pistols at the time said, this guy needs a call. And he says, I'll get on it. Something happened. He never returned the call biggest customer screw a service you know mess up uh and it was just it was hugely devastating we've had people uh talk to us multiple times they'll never you know they'll never be a a hudson customer because that video it it now is in the the internet it extends forever and for us it serves as the best customer service uh heads up ever it's like remember that lesson and there's no reason you should ever forgive it because it will live on um and so basically what had happened is a friction surface that was that was it. Um, we we actually couldn't find anything wrong with the pistol, and but it's not because this is not because he has video of it. It doesn't mean the customer experienced something different. It means that the uh, the mechanical parts um, that a friction surface existed that had not broken in yet mechanically, which that's a problem. You need a pistol to run for you right when you get it out. Um, some companies, bigger companies allow for a break-in period. Well, as a new company, that's not really something we want to do for our customers. Um, but the big thing you asked, how did we get through knowing we were ready to ship? Uh, we ran our pistols 10, past 10,000, our test pistols, production ready test pistols past 10,000 rounds in the space of three days, quarter that 115, uh, quarter, uh, round nose, quarter that 124, um, hollow point and then up quarter of that 124 i believe flat nose plus p or it was i might have been i might have been 147 hollow point or flat nose but we ran all those well we pulled that product specification off the modular handgun system bid the army bid they did 10,000 rounds and um not because we were ever going to go for that bid but because we wanted to show up and say our pistol is ready to play with with uh, much more established brands than ours. And so it was a great deal of cost, a great deal of time and a great deal of effort from a very dedicated team and an awesome group of engineers. Um, but we did that. And we also, we proof load and then 15 rounds through every pistol that ships so that we know that it's safe to ship. There is no legal, if anyone's curious, there is no legal requirement for that. Um, but I, I like it as a legal requirement because I know I'm shipping you a pistol that can take that amount of pressure and that does function. So whenever we get reports back of pistols not functioning, that's a big red flag for us from a quality standpoint or or a diag- diag- uh, diagnosing standpoint because we've already proved that the pistol will run uh, through 15 rounds. And uh, and so I'm sure I'm sure somebody's gonna be like, I'm getting a used gun. Well, any big manufacturing company is shipping you a pistol that they have proved can actually fire bullets and they have it on video. Uh, so their liability goes way, way down. If you say, Hey, this thing blew up. Like, what'd you do? <laughs> right. Yeah. And the, the good thing is that actually, I mean, obviously the company's still young, but you're highly involved in this, the social medias. I see you answering back questions. You know, it's not every time you can get the CEO to answer 
questions or try to track down a pistol that there's a problem with, you usually got to go through like some generic customer service email and get some dude behind a desk. And then that email kind of trickles all the way up if you really want to talk, but you're really involved on the, the internet side of things, at least right now. Right. <laughs> uh, try try to be. Um, I actually, I enjoy it, but I, I try to let some things go. If someone says something negative or something baiting or something, they, you know, I try to let that one just leave for itself. Oh, yeah. But, if, but if it's something, something where I can contribute, you know, actually what's happened or, or, chase down a customer if he doesn't know where to contact. I, I really enjoy that part. And I'm thinking in the next couple of years, I'm going to enjoy it while it's here. Um, because in the next couple of years, I'm pretty sure once I have a marketing team, they're going to tell me, uh-uh, you take a step back and we will we'll schedule yeah. you know you times to get with you know the shooter's mindset or, or only yeah. those things. Because get your butt off Facebook in case you say something stupid one day. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You got <laughs> to be careful with the interwebs and the baiting. They'll bait yeah. you in. They'll reel you in, and then all it does is the screen cap away, and then it's it's over. Let oh, me tell yeah. you, the gun community is like, and I can say this because I'm a woman. The gun community is like a woman, <laughs> and if you say something, they will not forget. Like, um, there's a couple companies that have, yeah, there's one recently that said some things with all the political stuff, and it has not gone well. I don't think, and. Yeah. People uh, don't president forget. Of the company too. Yeah, it was another. It was yeah. president of a company, and people do not forget, and they don't forgive very well. That thing, that thing was screen capped like six times, and everything that was said yep. was screen capped, and it was over. There was no deleting it because it's on the internet forever. There's no taking. Tell contact that company. Let's take this article down. It's over. Once it's there, it's there. So it's not like the old days. So yeah, you definitely got to be careful with the baiting and getting involved in these. I don't know. <laughs> caliber debates right which we oh yeah here that, that, uh, he's gonna gonna throw out there what do you got man uh well the, the person was and i imagine it to be quite challenging for the possibility of a compact model because uh, your recall system is probably a little shorter than normal already Actually, it's a full size. Uh, I'm actually proud of this. It's a full size guide rod. Um, uh, so we were, what we would have to do is it would take six to eighteen months dialing in a uh, double, a nested recoil spring, a double recoil spring, similar to what you see in a uh, twenty six. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but that takes some time because what you're dealing with is you're you're dealing with where your lockup is in relation to where your slide rests on your spring, and dialing in basically as your barrel is coming over your hood and pushing down in that mechanical lockup that uh, the short recoil operation where your spring is within that operation matters a lot and the weight and how it all dials into it. So that takes some time. Uh, it, it is possible. It's going to be a lot easier to just chop the grip off and make you uh, make you a uh, <laughs> say, say barrel link. Yeah. yeah. Hey, that's a, that's a thing. That's a thing. That's a thing that people say that do. I don't know what is it. Nineteen X, kind of. Well, that's a different version, but still. Yeah, oh, that, they, you know? they added some link to that one. But yeah, so yeah, they so added yeah, a link to that one. Right? Chop, chopping that down would be a lot easier than uh, chopping down the front. But uh, I, whenever we start looking at a, a compact, there is a market for the Glock twenty six crowd. But I found a lot of them were waiting for that single stack nine. And if we were going to go to a shortened barrel, um, the consideration would be is uh, for the customer and the customer interest. Would we want to just go to a single stack? with the shorter barrel or do we want to do, you know, or do we want to introduce right. an interim? What about, uh, what about a Hudson 45? Uh, caliber change also eight, about 18 months. And I just need about $1.5 million of working capital because I, if we, if we did, if we did that, I'd want to design the entire pistol around the caliber. And the, the big thing I'd, I'd probably get into so many different discussions with so many different customers about whether they'd want a single stack or a double stack. A single stack would, would cut down your uh, timeline significantly. Uh, you could use a 1911 tube with a higher cut, uh, build it around that. Um, but dialing that in, um, I wouldn't want to use a 1911 tube simply because the nine millimeter, it wasn't built for that. 
And so I would probably end up making a proprietary magazine. And I, that, that just, again, I know how much that costs. So you'd probably add another 100 to 150K on top of it to get your stampings up. Um, but I don't know for you, would you want a single stack or a double stack 45 or a staggered stack or how many round capacity? Uh, definitely more than a, not a single, a- anything more than a single. I, I, for that gun, you know, yeah, like, you know, it, I mean, it's not yeah. like that gun's a, it's a well, one, I carry full size guns on a regular basis for concealed carry anyway. I'm, I'm a big guy. So, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I carry a, a custom 2011 tactical. <laughs> little light. That's that's nice. light <laughs> so, uh, my wife has pictures to, uh, we, we can put them up later just to prove it. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, every you know, guy is wanting to prove how big their gun is. No, 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 not like that. Nah, I wasn't gonna make a joke. You uh, got a light uh, on it, man. You yeah, I don't. That, and uh, so I mean, I I would want something with a little, uh, the more firepower the better. So if you can get some kind of staggered stack or double stack forty five in there, because you were able to do a super thin grip with a double stack nine millimeter, so why not carry on with the same thing with a double stack forty five <laughs> and give me give me twelve or thirteen rounds of forty five and you know. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Challenge thrown yeah, down. A, the forty-five or die guys, you know, would we'll, we'll would probably appreciate that. Because well, I mean, knock, you, what's the knock you on already, the nineteen eleven? You, you already get eight rounds. Uh, the the properties of the forty-five that push the gun straight back, and you're talking about a system that changes. Because I always say, I thought nines, factory nines, are muzzle flippy. Forty-fives push back pretty straight and a 40 is the worst of both worlds because you get a ton of recall all over the place. And yeah. uh, so if you already got a 45 that kind of pushes back and you got a system that helps that occur even better then you got a, uh, uh, a 45 that is s- even more controllable during recall. And I mean, yeah. that, that would seem to be your, uh, Concealed carry the guys that carry 45, like carry carry 45, that would seem like the dream gun at that point to me. Yeah, double stack 45 that actually works and can stay pretty flat, right? Yeah, I think the big, I think the biggest challenge we have right now, as far as uh going, the the only the only reason we saw um some of the bigger high speed military units move away from 45 and start moving toward nine is the United States of America decided unilaterally that we were going to declare the hollow points no longer uh, violate the Geneva convention. And then they got even more creative and put polymer tips onto hollow points and said, no, no, this is something totally different. Look, it's a, it's a regular round. Uh, And so whenever you had that, the guys who were counting on 45 ball, the, the guys who had to, or were doing that, uh, they didn't have to anymore, and so they could move to uh, nine. And I think that also drove a lot. The move from forty back to nine was the technology advance of the polymer tip nine millimeter ammunition. And so that that I think is the biggest move away from forty five that I've seen. I I still I still love my I've my Wilson Combat CQB forty five with a light on it. Uh, I love that gun dearly. Um, he did, he didn't get retired until I was able to bring an H nine and an H nine a home, uh, which was, which was a lot of fun. But, uh, the 45, if we, if we went to the 45, we'd want to see what we could do. And I'm curious, is the same crowd that wants a 45, the same crowd that wants a 10 mil or no? Mm. I don't fucking think so. I tell you what, I saw that comment the other day. <laughs> I, I, I just say, I don't know. 10 millimeter question mark. I'm like, Oh, fuck. you know I mean? I, if it was me, I just go with, Hey, I, I like 10 millimeter, but, uh, if I, I wouldn't just screw the 40, don't do it. 45. We get that rolling out. And then we think about a 10 millimeter. That's it. And depending on that, it goes, I don't know though. The only thing about 10 millimeter is the availability, the cost of shooting it, but there is a, a, By a the crowd. time you make a 10, you made a 40. 
Yeah, but we don't. We're trying to let that round die. So why not? Well, I guess if there's a <laughs> there's enough people out there, I guess they'll buy. It. I don't know, man. I just we don't even stock forties anymore in a shop because we want. Somebody to wants to shoot a somebody wants to shoot a Hudson in limited. You know, just because. Yeah. Just because. All right. Yeah. All righty. I think we're. But I think lastly here we're gonna round this one off here. There's a couple uh, more questions we want to hit um, on this one, but. I want to get this one out there real quick. Upcoming kind of events or goals slash matches. I know Iwa is the pretty much shot show in Germany. Uh, like I said, you're not there, uh, but the COO is. Um, anything like that coming up and uh, anything else other than Iwa? Or we can talk about Iwa now since we're on the topic. Well, we got Iwa. We're going over basically to meet and greet and let uh, the the international customer. My big concern in an international customer is how do we support them? Um, because I mean, getting parts over there, they're they, they're putting down a, a price on the top of their pistol, and that's even more than what you know eighteen hundred or even the California price might be. And if they have an issue with their pistol, how do we learn about it? How do we know about it? And how do we support them? And I don't know how that is. Um, so that's uh, that's our big thing that we're doing over in the U.S. So we sent our COO, that's uh, Cole Roberts, shout out to him. He's probably on a flight right now, many, many hours in the air. And he'll be doing he'll be doing that. And then we got the NRA coming up. And NRA is going to be interesting because we're going to have, I'm telling you, Inc., things have gotten very political in the past couple of weeks. And uh, for, for me, uh, I know, I know what I believe, but I don't think most people right now are wanting to talk about their beliefs. Most people want to talk about their opinions or their, their emotions or their feelings about things. And uh, so I've stayed mostly out of it because if we want to talk about beliefs, I, I can do, do that for hours and hours and hours. Um, but uh, I'll be interested to see since the mayor pro temp came out and said, I'd rather the NRA not have their show here. What exactly is going to go on? We'll see how that shakes out here for us. But I'm looking forward to it because it's right up the road, only a two to three. I can just throw everything in the back of the truck instead of having to fly everywhere like to Vegas and get uh, in a hotel. It'll be it'll be easy. Yep, there it is. I plan on attending. Hopefully, I believe. Heath, are you going out there or no? No, Jen, I definitely not. like it. Jen, you're not going out there, right? No. It's, it's I don't know. I like the NRA show feel. It's a, it's a different feel from shop. I, I just say I prefer it. Yeah, I prefer Much it. More. I do. To it's shot a, show, but it's a different conversation. He, <laughs> it's it it's is, a completely it different conversation. Well, because yep. I mean, uh, the, crowd, gonna... the crowd at shot is supposed to be the guy buying your product to put in a store, and the guys at NRA are ninety nine percent users. Yep. Guys prepping stuff for a store. So. All right. Yep. <laughs> All right, we're done with questions on my end. We're going to finish up on these live questions here. Bald and Curious says Harry's holster uh, makes a nice CCW holster uh, for the H9. Um, he's looking for the CAD files to make them. So, yeah, so Harry's know. holsters, I have I have multiple times. If our guys, if Harry's holsters has not gotten their CAD files yet, it's going to mm -hmm. be a long day for someone tomorrow. Yeah, and I, I have told him personally that I would make sure that those guys sent them to him. So if they haven't gotten them to him, this is going to be a really long day for somebody or a very short day, one or the other. There it, is. there it is. Yeah, that's me. What do we have here? Kudos to Hudson's commitment to customer service and product quality here from Steph. Uh, that's in the live chat here. Going through a couple of these on the fly. Any chances? Oh, here we go. We got some more requests. Uh, any any chances of a desert tan model, <laughs> or or personal choice of all gold plated hotness? Right, because that H9. that'll that'll <laughs> make it that'll make it shoot better. Um, I really right now we want to make sure we support the aftermarket Cerakote guys and any of that business. I'd like to kick to them because those guys do a great job and that's how they make their living. If we uh, if we stick with black and we stick with nitriding, those guys will have something that uh, what. Blown Deadline has done some beautiful pieces on the H9. Uh, Mad custom, custom Coatings has done some awesome stuff already, and they did a bunch of different like uh, production style colors. And so, sending it to those guys and helping them make a living, and us all supporting everybody within the community is how I'd like to see it. Boom! There we go. Last and, question. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was, I was just going to say, uh, next time you definitely want to have Lauren on here. People enjoy looking at her a lot more than they do me. And I, you know, that's okay by me. I completely understand it. 
She's also smarter and better to talk to. So, <laughs> no, you did an excellent job, man. I tell you what, but the first Hudson booth at Chacha I went to, I want, I did want Lauren to be on video, and I think you were like right next to her, but I wanted her to be on video <laughs> because I think she just looked a little bit better than you. She does. So Every there we go, and that's a lot of views, right? Uh, so that was the case on that. Uh, what do we have? Last question here. I I looked at it. Uh, John Gonzalez said, uh, "Guys, the liberals are going to get mad and cry if we talk about guns. Crazy people should be put in a crazy house." So that's uh, that's the last uh, comment here, as far as the show goes. Any live on your end? Uh, no, nope, uh, we're good on my end. There we go. Uh, but that's it. I think we can wrap this one up, wind this one down and shout outs. I think we are. Yeah. I think I'm wrapped up on my end here. Round this one down to shout outs. Jen, what do you have? All right. Shout out to prime ammo. Um, just got back from the core, uh, shooting solutions. We did the AI classic there together. So that was awesome to, um, to be able to hang out with all my teammates, Regina and John and Ryan. Hay. So we had a great time. So shout out to them for great ammo and a great time this weekend. Night Force Optics, I got to run that new attacker, um, 5 to 25, and that scope is amazing. I love it. So definite shout out to them. Shout out to Lansing Tactical. Um, and also shout out to Kestrel Ballistics, who is supporting Team Prime. So I got a new Kestrel. Um, nice. Got to play with this weekend and been playing with the wind meter. Anyway so much fun to sit here and play with and uh, it i don't think i know what all it does yet it's got a lot to it <laughs> uh shout outs to grizzly targets sharp shooters of augusta and shooters of augusta under industries carbon arms and patriot cases because i definitely am getting one and need one bad so yeah we gotta i think we gotta talk to dust we talked to him a couple times about under uh, i think we're supposed to be doing something with them as far as the shooter's mindset show goes, I just I got the details, but I haven't put it into action. I don't need to talk to Dustin on the phone or something like that. But Heath, what do you have as far as uh, shout outs? Uh, Criterion Barrels, American Defense Manufacturing, Eagle Imports, and SPS Pistols. If you're looking for a good 2011, uh, True Spec, German Precision Optics, or GPO USA, the Outdoor Shop, Shop Local, Red Hill Tactical. Safari Land, Dangerous But Good, Stage Zero Shooting Supply, and Pure Gold Shotgun Chokes. All right there. Uh, Cy, what do you have as far as shout-outs go, man? Uh, the entire team that uh, worked all day and uh, me and was okay with me leaving earlier to make sure uh, I was I was set for not getting in, in the middle of a crisis or, or something that was going on. Our whole team is working their butts off, and it's pretty awesome. And Shooter's Mindset, thank you all so much for hosting and uh, for the invite. It's been it's been a good conversation. Although, like I said, next time, you all just need to shut me up. Yeah, no, no, man. I There was a lot of information shared here, man. You, you, you obviously know what the hell you're talking about, especially as far as design stuff. And you guys really did the research. You know, sometimes we get, you know, say, people, you, you can get the best shooter on the in the world on the show. But sometimes he really can't give you the tips or how he became the best shooter in the world. You know, some people can, can just relay information way better than some others can. I think you relayed the information really well. Um, so we appreciate you coming on and taking the time out of your busy schedule to come on the show for sure. Oh, on thank you. All right. Shout out to my end here. So subscribe to the channel. If you're watching on the YouTube side of things, right below the video, you see the subscribe button every Tuesday at 9. We have a new episode of the Shooter's Mindset with a new guest. Uh, we I need to finish out uh, actually booking this month, but we do have a guest for next week. Uh, folks over at Tactical Shit, appreciate their support. Shop.tacticalshit.com. Folks over at Tandem Cross, if you want to email me, also the Shooter's Mindset at gmail.com is a good way to get a hold of me or on the social medias and all that stuff. Uh, definitely thanks to folks over at Gear Nation USA, Rise Armament, and Rand CLP for fine... Uh, Gun cleaning supplies over there. Uh, that'll do it for episode 211 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in. Jen, Heath, thanks for the help, and we are out of here. All right.